Welcome back to another video and today officially with the fastest router that we have seen here on the channel. This is the Asus ROG Raptor GTX 16000. Last year we took a look at the GT11000 which had one Ethernet port with 2.5 gigabit but this one right over here has two with 10 gigabit each which will give us insane speeds. Besides the 10 gigabit simultaneously it will give us the ability to have an extra 5000 megabits per second that we can use for example via Wi-Fi and I will share those results with you in just a few moments. And all the tests that we see here on the video would not be possible without this Sabrent Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit adapter which I did connect to the MacBook Pro to achieve the speeds that we are about to see. It has four different bands, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz number one, 5 gigahertz number two, and 6 gigahertz, i.e. mesh and extendable router capability, which actually at this moment it's already connected to the AX59U and the GT6. And on the next video, I will share with you the results of using this extendable router with others on different classes and price ranges. Now if you are watching this video on your Windows computer and you still haven't activated the license don't forget to check out KeysFan where we'll find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and also down below in the video description you will get an extra discount. Now in terms of the unboxing experience it comes inside this box right over here it has the router it has all the accessories documentation every single antenna is covered by a plastic and it has a plastic right over here on this glossy I would say mirror it looks like a mirror with the RGB LED which looks awesome and we can disable it by the way construction wise it's a ROG router so we can expect great build quality right over here and all the plastics and everything that we touch it just feels premium. It has this RGB which looks really awesome and in terms of design overall I would say that it's very subjective. I do believe that some people like me and like you will love the design. Some will find it probably too aggressive, too much towards gaming and so on and so forth. But that's the point of this router. If we compare with the AX59U, which is more towards the corporate world or even the GT6, which is a router that I would say hybrid, this one is from those three, the one that looks more aggressive, more towards the gaming setup. Now it has eight external antennas, four internal antennas. By the way, the external antennas are non-detachable, so we can just adjust them and that is it. It has a quad-core 2.0 gigahertz CPU, 256 megabytes of flash storage with the operating system and two gigabytes of RAM. More specifications, as you guys know, link down below with everything that you will need to know. Connectivity-wise, we will find the two of my favorite connections, which are the 10 gigabytes bit ports, 4 gigabit Ethernet port, one 2.5 gigabit one port, which will allow us in the future when our internet provider is able to sell us 2.5 gigabit internet connection, then this one is ready for that. It also has one reset button, a USB 3.2 generation 1 and a USB 2.0, the button to turn on and off and the DC in. Now although this is a more complex router with a lot of capabilities and features compared with the AX59U for example, but the way to configure is as easy as it was with that one and as it was, for example, with the AX53U, which was the lowest on the category that we've seen. And in a, a matter of few minutes, we will have the router working and we just need the mobile phone. We don't even need to connect to a computer, which is awesome. Now, in terms of Wi-Fi speeds and range, the first test that I did was to connect the Sabrent 10 gigabit to my MacBook and with open speed test, we could reach 10 gigabit without any issues whatsoever. The next step, I did use the 10 gigabit connection and simultaneously access to the Wi-Fi. I was able to squeeze a little bit more, 500 megabits per second of download and 100 on upload, which is the maximum of my internet providers. So the limitation is not the router itself, it's on my site. It has four bands as we have seen and the maximum of the bandwidth is 6,000 megabits per second. Divided 
added by the bands that I will post somewhere here on the screen. Now moving on to real world tests so that you can compare with other devices. Here on the office, it's even boring to say, it was able to get the maximum of my internet provider, 500 megabits per second download and 100 on upload. When you go to the gym and cinema area, we were getting the maximum at 500 megabits per second download and 100 on upload. And we are talking about 100 square meters so that you have an idea. Here in the office, we have 40 something square meters. Now going to the backyard, we will extend the range to almost 300 square meters and we were able to get roughly 400 megabits per second download and 100 on upload. So all these tests are here on the same floor. Moving one floor above to the office, exactly above the office, we were able to get 400 megabits per second download and 100 on upload. And if we move to the other room, which is the living room, just next to that area, we were able to get 70 megabits per second. But if we move to the other side of the house, one floor above, we will drop to 14 megabits or so, and we will only be able to reach the 2.4 gigahertz. Just out of curiosity, like I do with every other single router, I did went one floor above, exactly above the office, and we were able to get roughly six megabits per second, which means that one floor above will be okay, exactly above, but if we go on the diagonal, then we will lose the signal, and two floors above will be too much. So before we move on to another few tests, what I can say is that if you are looking for this router because it has a lot bigger range than the others that we have seen, that is not the answer. If you are looking to extend the range, then the extendable router capability of all these will be the best option. And probably you might want to take a look at two times the AX59U or two times the GT6, which are cheaper and you will be able to get a bigger wireless coverage than only one single GT16 tower, unless you can take full advantage of everything that this one has. Now, second part of the test was to take it from the office, which is here at the basement. So we are in a really closed corner. So it's great to see the limitations of every single router. But if I want to use it on a real life situation, then the way to put it is on a centralized area of my home. And that's what I did to test it out, put it next to the my internet provider router. And there I was able to get on every single corner of my house internet access. Now there will be some areas that we will get more, some areas that we'll get less, but the truth is that I will be able to achieve the full coverage of my house, thing that I cannot achieve when I have the router right over here on the office. So with these two tests, I hope to share to that side of the screen that these are the limitations that we will find, but more importantly is the location that we will be able to put the router to enable it to have a wider range. So putting on the middle floor, what I was able to get was internet internet down below here on the office and internet above which covers both floors and then it was able to reach out to the front yard and also to the backyard. Think that it's not possible when I have the router right over here on the basement. And I still got really nice speeds here in the office and also upstairs which was great. At this moment right over here I cannot go below. Now, in terms of the software, as we have seen with the other models, it's really complete and we will have all the options right over here on the mobile phone. And if we want to use the browser, we have seen the examples. As it's as simple like using the AX59U. Now, limitation that I did find besides the ones that I did share with you was that at this moment, I discovered that I don't have any device that it's capable of reaching the 6 gigahertz signal that this router has. So I'm really curious because the maximum that I was able to get on the 5 gigahertz uh, connection was 1000 megabits per second on my phone and on my laptop. And I was expecting to test out the 6 gigahertz to see if I was able to reach a little bit more. But at this moment, I'm not able to answer that, but hopefully the video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really, really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.